Manscaped is the leader in below the waist grooming. Now it's time to trust them with the whole shebang. A good manscaping routine is the key to flopping with confidence. Just ask Buddy Franklin in the 2022 Grand Final. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. Inside you will find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner. I actually shampooed my hair last night. The sham was silent, but the poo was loud. Well, I didn't need to know that, but you'll also find the Ultra Premium Deodorant to hopefully cover that smell up after the fact. Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner, Anti-Chafing Boxes, and the shed travel bag to chuck it all in. The Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and weed whacker nose and hair trimmer both feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology and that will protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are also waterproof so you can shave with less mess. Bush, do you like Imagine Dragons? Yeah, I don't mind them. Well, Imagine Dragon this premium ball shaver along those smooth, salty nuts as you kick back watching How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, You, Me and Dupree, or any number of Kate Hudson DVDs. Well, unlike those DVDs where you'd get 100% off at the store, you can get 20% off all these Manscaped products we've told you about with free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and using the code TRUEFOOTY20. It's time you enjoyed the finer things in life and got yourself a platinum package for your platinum package. DVDs nuts. <laughs> Enjoy the podcast. <laughs> I'm fascinated by all the ornaments in this room. It's fucking crazy, bro. Yeah, a bit of, bit of nostalgia floating around here. Yeah, fucking nice. Right. This seat doesn't adjust. Oh, yeah, you got the dud. Grab another one. Nah, it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> I like being a very medium height. <laughs> medium rare. You sound like the uh, Jeffrey Dahmer actor in that new Netflix series when you said that. <laughs> I don't know. What you have is. to watch. You know Jeffrey Dahmer, right? The guy that killed 17 people and, like, cut them up and ate them. I know the name. I just yeah. know him from the South Park parody. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck. I'll have to watch that. Yeah, there's, there's like him and a couple of other serial killers. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. What? Is that like a... Was that just an episode of some yeah. season years ago? Yeah. yeah right. but it was mainly about like the devil having a sweet 16. He like, <laughs> and he sends like the free fucking serial killers up to the thing to like get him his Ferrari cake and all the spoiled shit a sweet 16 would want. And they keep yeah, fucking right. up. Podcast. Real footy podcast. 93. A seamless transition. We Wait, should, is that actually the start? Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how much I'm going to leave in. Yeah. We should just review South Park instead of football from now on, I yes. think. Yeah. Anyway. Who's your favourite South Park character? Cartman. Nice. No, I probably would have to think about that. Anyway. <laughs> True footy podcast. 93. Randy Marsh. Joined by Druzy. The first time you've been back in the studio since, what was it, like 56, I reckon? At a punt? Yeah. 55 might have been swooping. I'm going 52, I reckon. Yeah? That's, okay. my, that's my prediction. I'm back, baby! Yeah! Yeah, there goes the audio. I <laughs> <laughs> always have this issue. Um, how are you, Drews? Welcome back. Yeah, great, mate. Great. 30 days out from finishing my honours degree. Mm. Stressed. Just hot, Groundhog Day, as they say. Mm. Same thing every day. Just yeah. uni gym, uni gym, uni gym. And that's about it. Come give you a cuddle from time to time, and yeah. that's about it, really. How You're not so uni with Jim, then, are you? Uh, no. You're cuddling him on the side. No. Bye. <laughs> uni James. Um, sober October, you were just briefly telling yeah. me about, yeah? And yeah. Uh, was listening out a good way to kick that off. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I don't know. Like, I've just had a few big weekends, mm. like in a row and it sort of just sets you back into like Wednesday until you start to feel normal again mm. so me and Sean and Sammy a couple of the lads are all doing Sober October so yeah hopefully I can be more productive and whatnot. But, How's the uh, mental clarity? Oh you know fantastic yeah. yeah yeah real good yeah let's move on <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a big, big weekend for a couple of reasons. Long weekend here in Perth. Uh, but, of course, it was grand final weekend. And uh, I think we've gone three minutes of recording before actually mentioning that we're going to talk about the grand final today. Football. The biggest game of the year. Yes. Football. Yes. Football. You meant to do it to Jazzy. It's like uh, the football. force. Yeah. Um, <laughs> grand final day. 
Uh, what did we think of it? Where, where did you spend Grand Final Day? You did a live stream, didn't you? Yep, on my couch, in my living room with Sean O, just watching, mm. streaming to about 20 people. Yeah. Nothing that, crazy. I, well, we did very similar with, uh, joined by Papa McClure as well. Uh, I do remember going onto your pod, uh, sorry, your, your stream with about like 20 minutes to go in the game and you just looked so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was just like, there was nothing exciting at that point because yeah. the game was over by like five minutes into the third quarter. Mm. Um, oh, so. if, uh, at quarter time, it was very close yeah. to being over well, eight. Sydney sort of fought back mm. somewhat in the second quarter. Like, they started to compete. Like, their ball movement was getting a little bit better. Started to get handball chains going and whatnot. So, I was like, all right, maybe Sydney can come back into it. We've seen a lot of com- comebacks this year. But Geelong just too old, too strong, too experienced. Too good. Too good. Yeah, it's funny how they've kind of defied that whole um, the whole thing about them getting older and more, mm. <laughs> more experienced. It's like, they, they really are, like... I don't want to say a trendsetter, but they really are doing their own kind of list strategy, aren't they? Like, mm-hmm. I think that was the oldest team ever, yeah. uh, both in the prelim and then the grand final when they were seven days old, <laughs> respectively, <laughs> times 22. Did you hear Dave Mundy signed in a five-year deal with John? <laughs> yeah. 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 And Josh Kennedy. <laughs> They'd probably take him on. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I reckon, yeah, Mundy would get a game. So yeah, he's good enough to play on any team. Yeah. yeah. he yeah. walk in oh, starting right. 22. Seven, seven, I forgot I was with some friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, my first question to you, Drew, was what What did you make of the game? Were you entertained? <laughs> I'm guessing. Like, well, grand finals, you can't just say, oh, that, that was a shit game for me because it's like, there's, it's one team versus another and one team's better than the other. Analysis. Analysis. But same as last year, like, I enjoyed watching Petrarca, Clayton Oliver, mm. etc., Bailey Fritch, Ron Mark, and mm. show why they're the best team. Same as Geelong. Um, like, seeing Joel Selwood get a flag in his last game. Um... Yeah, bloody Tyson Stengel, the story that he's had this year. Um, Brad Close had a massive game. I don't know. I like. I don't have a sook because the game's bad. I enjoy the team that's doing well. So like, I enjoyed it, and uh, my poppy's a Geelong fan, so I was happy for the, them to get the flag for him as well. Mm. Um, it obviously wasn't the most riveting contest, but like, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's a pretty good summary of it. I think th- t- there is fewer things more underwhelming though than a bad grand final and as you say yeah, you probably shouldn't call it a bad grand final because we saw a dominant Geelong side mm. win the premiership and, and yeah we don't want to make it sound too negative because mm. they, they have uh, pulled off something awesome I think last year for me though admittedly I was going for Melbourne last year but I think the way they did it was at least exciting like 74 points but it felt like a thriller for like yeah. three and a half quarters whereas this game was clearly Geelong were just on from the beginning and Sydney just took too long to find their feet uh, the average margin in a grand final mm-hmm. over the last four years, well, yeah, since since uh, my heroic Eagles won, <laughs> um, is 68 points. Yeah. So yeah. It has been a while since we've actually had a good close grand final. 2020 was a bit of an exception where I think it ended up being about five goals in the end. Mm. I think it was about 30 points, but again, that felt close. And then Dusty Martin just like, just yeah. shat all over <laughs> Um, <laughs> is that since 18 including 2018 or no, no, no last year yeah. yeah yeah so 74 points last yeah. year 81 points this year um 2019 was 89 or 91 yeah. points 89 points Some I think it was 89, yeah. yeah so i think that would go down as like top five biggest grand final wins yeah it's crazy how like the two best teams in the competition face off like you always expect the grand final to be a good game and the last four have just been like not no contest with mm. like 10 minutes left in the last quarter yeah yeah yeah, well, we, again, making it sound negative, but Geelong pulled off an incredible feat. Bush, were you surprised the fact, not so much that Geelong won, but were you surprised that it got out to 81 points? I was surprised by the margin, for sure. I've, mm. I, I've sort of had Sydney pegged all year long as that sort of team Gross. that can sort of <laughs> stop another team from getting too much momentum and sort of swarming over them, but on the biggest stage of them all, that sort of let them down. Yeah, they were, they were really disappointed. They had a couple of, like, Lone Rangers, so to speak. Chad mm. Warner had a great game. I know you're a huge fan of his looks. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but and he, his he, ass. <laughs> uh, uh, gross. Yes, yes. Nude, uh, nude leaks, etc. Um, <laughs> uh, no, he did play really well in a um, in a losing grand final. Two goals, twenty nine touches, I think. Um, and then for the apparently is rated best on ground by like the analytics. Or champion whatever. data yeah. was yeah the analytics. Yeah. <laughs> no, champion data, you're right. And then Buddy Franklin was like a distant last. 
That is crazy. Uh, yeah. What do they have? T- like two touches? Something? Five touches. Five, yeah. yeah, five or six. Yeah, so five. Crazy. Um, I mean, it wasn't really the sort of day where he's going to get lots of opportunities, was it? There was no clean ball. I don't remember a single clean inside of his 50 for Sydney. Yeah, that's there's, true. No, there's no joke there. Talking about clean balls, Manscaped. Yeah. True yeah. footy 20. <laughs> um, I think it was a real bad call to play Sam Reid because he was so underdone. Like every contest he was in, he was just getting beaten by like Sam De Koning, like young player, elite athleticism, you know, like, Spring chicken, you, you know what I mean? Explosive and everything. Coming up against like an older player who's injured. You what, you would have been way better off with Logan McDonald in that, that side. Not that it would have made a difference to the, yeah. the, the result, but um, they lost lots of contests where Sam Reid just couldn't get the job done. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And Longmore actually um, expressed that view as well in the pre- uh, press conference afterwards. He said, yeah, yeah, we okay. got that call wrong. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was a strange thing to say when your team got rolled by 81 points. I think you just like, leave it. But I love the transparency, though, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. yeah I suppose so. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, people don't own their stuff up as often as you like these days. Mm-hmm. True. But, um, on your horse, Longmire. Appreciate your stuffing you? up there. Oh, yeah. Horse Longmire. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you <laughs> He's known as horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just if his pants were transparent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's weird though because we saw Sydney play such a good game at the G against Melbourne um, only a few weeks before and they couldn't implement that again against Geelong on the same ground and they've been like recognised as, the, as one of the best pressure sides in the competition all season but just completely fell off a cliff in the grand final it was very uncharacteristic of them you're right yeah it, there's certainly no fears for them at the MCG I remember I think over the last two years they've had a few good wins there uh, I remember they tore up Richmond early last year yeah, yeah uh, this that's year right. as you say beat the, beat the Demons there twice mm-hmm. and then they're coming up against a side who's not actually a traditional MCG side yeah. who like they play there a bit but they're not a true home side so mm-hmm. it was just I think just the occasion Geelong yeah. were ready for it they've been waiting for a long time a lot of those players would have either played in a premiership before um, or played in the grand final in 2020 as well. Yeah. So I think, as we said, it was the oldest cat side, uh, or oldest side ever. And Sydney's, I don't have any stats to back this up, but I did read that they're the one one of the youngest grand final sides yeah. ever. So I think it was a combination of that, just the early start for Geelong. And um, yeah, Sydney just never really got into the contest. And it doesn't really speak to how good they've been this year. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes when there's a runaway grand final winner, we look back on that year and think that team was so much better than everyone else. And Geelong was rightfully the best team mm-hmm. this year, but... They're not 81 points better than the second side. It's just how history will reflect. Yeah, and Sydney are going to have to overcome that hoodoo of the last few years. Like, every team to lose in a grand final mm. in the last little bit has just gone to crud. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. Um, so, the Bulldogs did buck that trend by making the finals, at least. Yeah. But, uh, but you're right. Obviously, that's a big drop-off from, from where they were. Uh, it will be interesting to see. Sydney is such a typically... Uh, resilient team mm. uh, like historically so they got rolled in 14 they did make a top, the top four in 15 but they were putrid I think like the series. last four ish years like who, who have we had like GWS falling off a cliff yep. Adelaide falling off a cliff yeah um, I suppose Geelong weren't that team Geelong didn't really get rolled though like, yeah they true. lost by five goals that was a pretty close game yeah um, yeah but we'll see yeah it's an interesting point that there is a genuine trend there um, and we also read on Reddit that you what you're saying about the statistic around uh, grand final teams. Oh, remind me. <laughs> <laughs> remind I'm trying to segue him to try and get, get him to a bit. Uh, no, the one where um, oh, I, I'll just say it. <laughs> no, no grand finals. Is it no premiership side or no grand final? Oh, yeah, and with no teams ever had the same lineup again after yeah. a grand final lineup. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah so now yeah. that Selwood's retired, um, and uh, yeah, I think it was Jackson just getting traded as well. Yeah, Jackson got tra- getting traded. There's no chance that um, the the same premiership side can ever play again together. It's like never happened before. Yeah, okay. There's always okay. been some sort of change or injury or um, retirement mm. um, as, it, as it happens. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, speaking of Joel Selwood, retired after four flags, six grand finals, 355 games. Is he the best Selwood? <laughs> By no, of Flemington, more of a Troy, baby. man. <laughs> um, no, nah, he's had an amazing career. Chris Scott said he's like one, uh, probably the best player he'd ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when you consider everything, which you know is vague, but obviously that's, <laughs> that's an incredible career. Highest winning percentage of any player ever. Is that right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it doesn't I read it online. Yeah, his first year <laughs> walked into a premiership side and 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 bows out with his fourth premiership in his last game as well. Yeah. Three is captain? No, one is captain. Only one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think Cameron Ling retired. Oh, on yeah, the Ling flag. 11, yeah, yeah. Mm. And then who was 2007? Harley? Probably. Yeah, Harley would have been yeah, at least Harley. one of them. Maybe yeah. two. Yeah. 
That's true. But it's been a long time, like, since the Cats have won a flag. They've just been so good for so long that you sort of, like, I don't know, don't think about it. But it was over a decade ago that they won their last flag. Well, Sydney won one more recently than mm. the Cats did. They, which is Because you think of it, yeah. Yeah, 2012. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So, that, yeah, that was interesting to me. You look at the up and, young up-and-coming side, Sydney, you think, oh, it'd be more exciting if they won. But they've actually won more recently. Mm. And certainly played in, like, I'd say more grand finals off the top of my head. Yeah, they recently, 20, for sure. Um, and Sydney played in 14 and 16, as well as 12. So... Yeah. Analysis. Analysis like that. <laughs> Speaking of highest percentage winners, uh, Chris Scott is now... Uh, well, actually, I don't know if that changed this week, but I did look it up out of interest. He has the best win-loss ratio of any coach who's coached over 57 games. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you run the, the uh, table on AFL tables, um, <laughs> there's a he- heap that won one game as a caretaker coach. They have 100%. And then there was a smattering of guys who did, like, a couple of seasons here and there. But he's coached, I think, about a... 187 games or something like that yeah okay um, best win-loss ratio and uh, now his second premiership so uh, do you feel it kind of validates Chris Scott he's a guy that has been getting a lot of pressure yeah, over the last 10 years yeah he copped a bit of shit once all those guys from that first flag started retiring mm-hmm. and everyone's sort of like oh you just got lucky you got on the bomber Thompson tail end and caught a few of those guys still in their prime but he's kept them consistently about the mark and now that he's got a second flag with a different group of guys it's mm-hmm. sort of does vindicate him, I reckon. Yeah, he, Geelong have always been the barometer, like the entire time. Like, what club has been good for over a decade? Mm. None. And then even Sydney would probably be the next side you think of, and yeah. they, they've dipped as well. Yeah, because Geelong have dipped out of the finals once. Mm. Um, Chris Scott. Yeah. Well, last year, like after that prelim loss, there was so much pressure on him because mm. it was like, when will this side win a flag? They're only yeah. getting older and older. And then yeah, all of this year. Didn't lose a game for the last, what, like four months or something? Yeah, Shit. well, their last loss was against Fremantle in round nine. I think it was done. Yeah. Nice! So Fremantle are the real premier. <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like it might be St. Kilda, could be wrong, yeah, maybe. I'm pretty sure they went five and four against Fremantle. Okay, let, let me fact check Look this. I hope, I hope you're all right, because yeah. then it's like, you know, Fremantle automatic premiers. Yeah. <laughs> all right. St. KFC. Um, <laughs> yeah, so obviously Chris Scott... Uh, validated uh, or vindicated as uh, the right man for the yeah. job winning a premiership like that and he's sort of overseen you know the Hawks era the Richmond era and they've bobbed up for two flags either side of that so it's not like they didn't have tough competitors in that time obviously we've talked about in the last pod Geelong do have some advantages in some way some are inherent like location yeah. a little bit so they're more likely to attract the, the country Victorian kids yeah, all players rather. Well, the people who like living on the coast, having a bit of a surf, that sort of thing. Cause yeah, Melbourne's not really the place for that. Yeah, and some of them not inherent. Some of them are earned, and that's their culture, which I think Isaac Smith was talking about today, uh, well recently. And Normie. Uh, yeah, Normie, exactly. Yeah, we haven't, didn't even touch on that yet. Um, and also, you know, the the winning culture as well over the yeah. last fifteen years, their success. So it was St Kilda round nine, by the way. Was it? Yeah. Oh, my mistake. I Unfortunately, had round, I had round nine right, but obviously the the team wrong. So we played in round seven. I can yeah. see myself corrected. <laughs> um, and did you know that Isaac is Norm's grandson? I actually fell for that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I commented on your yeah. stream. Yeah, we saw that on your stream and you were like, oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, oh, cool. Yeah. Rad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, shout out as well to the oldest ever Norm Smith medalist, Isaac. Really? Three goals, 32 possessions. Yeah, how old is he? Like 30 odd? Yeah. Analysis. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you know what, as well, is an interesting trend? Only one non Victorian Premier in the last decade. Ooh, can you guess who that was? Wet toast. Yes, it was wet toast. Adelaide. But there, yeah. there you go. They there, won there best is, camp. There is a strong... <laughs> <laughs> there's a strong um, Victorian dominance over the yeah. last 15 years. Thick bias. So I'm trying to think. Since 06, West Coast last one, so there was Sydney in 12. Is mm-hmm. any other non-Victorian side won one? So Ooh. we're looking at two in 15 years. West Coast and Sydney are... Oh, that's pretty harsh on the South Australian clubs. But I was going to say, West Coast and Sydney are the only real, like, legitimate... You know what I mean? Like, oh, Brisbane yeah. as well. I'm talking shit. <laughs> my, my point has no valid. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> my point has no valid. I was going to say, Port and the Crows have both, like, won and, yeah. and been successful, at, like, around the mark as well and gotten close in other years, but, yeah. Well, in the first sort of couple of weeks of finals, it was, like, all the Melbourne-based clubs were losing. Like, yeah, Collingwood, that, Collingwood lost. Mm. Uh, Bulldogs lost. Who else lost in the first week of finals? Uh, Richmond. Richmond. And uh, did you say Melbourne? Doggies. Melbourne, Collingwood. Yeah, Florida. Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, not a Melbourne base, but yeah, mm. Victorian. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, so we really need to get our act together. 
And I think West Coast is going to do their part next year. So it's up to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> to help, eh? Flag mantles on, baby. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, baby. We'll see. We'll see. Um, cool. Any other thoughts and comments on the grand final? Um, we've covered it really. Ha- oh, ha- Tyson Stengel. All right. Mm. We should shout out Tyson Stengel. You, you did touch on him, but does this almost solidify him as recruiter of the year? I know there's another candidate from your club, Will Brody, mm. when you consider as well the cost. Yeah. But when you consider as well, Stengel's kicked four goals in a winning grand final side, the first ever All Australian after being delisted, mm. yeah. uh, as it all picked up as a delisted free agent specifically. That's hard to beat. Yeah. Uh, he's had an incredible year, and he's a gun. Players like him are very hard to come by. Just like pocket rocket mm. kicks, like two or three goals every week. Kicked four in the grand final. Mm. Um, yeah, probably it's recruited for you. Yeah. yeah, it's his third list. Um, so props to Eddie Betts, I believe it was, who was instrumental in going, "Hey, mm. we need to get that guy." And yeah. uh, there you go, delivered a premiership. Well, I mean, I may have won one anyway, but <laughs> still, obviously, yeah. no, he played a massive part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah, it would be interesting to see their best and fairest count because if he's all Australian, that puts him in the top handful, probably. Yeah, true. Um, no, one on. more good thing: just seeing Patrick Dangerfield get a flag, I think, just yeah. is very good thing. Like he's one of the best players of the generation. Mm. For him to like walk out of his career without a flag would have been underwhelming. Mm. So uh, hopefully Nathan Fife gets a flag. Well, yeah. I was sort of having the discussion with someone the other day, actually, sort of about the trifecta: Danger, Dusty, Fife. Like before this game, I would have had Fife comfortably ahead of Dangerfield. Now it's very tough yeah it's hard to make that argument isn't it yeah yeah i guess so i mean i, I prefer to look at them more as individuals i i, I think dusty's probably number one because of the yeah flags and norms yeah i think and so. a couple of brown lows i think so too because he's he plays a more of an impact forward role as well so yeah. his stats will decline he won't get the same amount of brown low votes but if he played as a midfielder all the time he would get the brown, probably that second brown yeah. low doesn't um, he have two I swear now one brown low two, two norms one round though, three norms. Yeah. Three norms. Yeah, Fuck, yeah. yeah, you're right. Of course, he won all three. Yeah. yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, but I think premierships can be a little bit overstated in AFL looking at individuals. In you have to take it into account, though. I think it's very minor. Because I, oh, I, think, it, I think it's kind of a basketball concept where they're one of five. But I don't think Fife is any less of a player. I, I, personally, like on your point, I don't think Dangerfield goes ahead of Fife just because he played in a, an amazing Geelong side. For, for, uh, yeah, Fife has never played in a quality side like that. That doesn't. That's not a de- re- uh, reflection of him. Yeah. So you're saying like, who is the better player? That like the grand final win doesn't determine it. But like you when you go down like in the history books, there's like the greats. The yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> the Adams Keep what it PG it's, it's a word it worked it sounds sexual <laughs> yeah like if, if you look at like who was the best player versus who was a, the greatest player I think like the term great what like you need a premiership to yeah consider yourself like a great I don't know that's how I think of it like, well that settles the Josh Kennedy versus Matthew Pavlich <laughs> <laughs> rats yeah that does make Shit. sense well yeah I, I agree to disagree because I don't think that takes away anything from Pav it's circumstantial that he wasn't playing in the in the best side mm. you know oh, you got close I guess but yeah anyway we'll move on to a little bit of uh, current events in the trade scene I feel like trades 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 everybody Yee! trades 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 Yee! trades that's good that's enough hype hello um, today we're talking about trades uh, yeah so obviously trades have um, really ramped up and it's I was saying to Bush I think on the last part I don't remember it ever being this hot this early because normally trade radio starts I feel like it starts after the grand final, but this mm. year it started like the semi-finals. Yeah, like a month ago. Yeah. And it's a reflection of how much shit is going on. Mm. Like I've made like three videos on it and there's just something different to say every single time. Um, and then, you know, since I think I did one a couple of days ago on every, every club's trade target. Go check that out. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's still a fair bit that I didn't even cover in that video. So Jordan Dugowie mm. is the hottest name on today's news anyway <laughs> uh, it'll change again next uh, next couple of days but this one is a bit confusing bush we were talking about it earlier there's some mixed reports Ooh, yeah. about what's happening so what's your understanding of the jordan to situation well i remember about this time yesterday i was doing the old reddit scroll and i saw someone link a twitter twitter thing saying yeah jordan to confirmed sticking with collingwood yeah and then i saw I said that. a bunch of stuff today going yeah st kilda think they're still in the race mm. yeah essendon still think they're in the race mm. it's just like have you been keeping up with the D- Dugowie side? Not really. I, I just saw that thing that Bush mentioned, like someone saying Dugowie has like been confirmed to re-sign to Collingwood. But yeah. 
Um, yeah, that contract clause is a bit bit of a sticky one. It's not like they didn't have Dane Swan on their list 10 years ago Dude. who would go to Vegas and do every drug under the sun. Like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would have happened, this though. <laughs> but yeah, okay, that's an extreme allegation. But you know, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, they, Jane Swan. <laughs> you can't accuse him of having a good time. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they're a champion of, like, champion players like Dugowie and Swan. Um, I don't know. Like, can you just say to someone like we're not going to give you a contract if you go and do this it's like bro if i show up and i'm the best player on the field most weeks just allow me to do whatever i want to do in my free time within reason some of the shit he's been caught doing is a bit out you go yeah oh, that's true yeah well yeah let's also be aware that like t- times have changed a little bit so even from 10 years ago um sponsor um sensitivity to like being associated with bad stuff mm. is a lot they're a lot more sensitive than they used to be. So that's why there's a different standard on Jordan Degoe than there was on Dane Swan. I think what... So for those who are unaware, Jordan Degoe apparently was offered a contract by uh, Collingwood and rejected it purely on the basis of the behavioural conditions. But that we, we never actually heard what exactly those clauses were. They He said that the... He rejected... Well, I think his manager said it was too broad and arbitrary, the requirements. Mm. I later also read that it, there was some... I, I don't know how true this is, but I think I read it on some unreliable source. But they <laughs> said, suggested that it, it kind of allowed Collingwood to terminate his contract at any time. Yeah, okay. So, so without... Like, there was a lot of criticism on Dugowie and, and Pies fans kind of arced up and they were like, well, if he can't commit to the behavioural standards, why do we want this guy anyway? But we don't know exactly which what issue he had with the contract, which mm. I think is key. Because if you read a contract that's completely vague and unbalanced... You that's, cannot be a bad boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly a great example of a... Not that that would ever be real. But, um, but you know what I mean? You've got to be specific. So yeah. it's not as though it said, you can't do class A drugs at, at work. And yeah. he's like, nah, fuck it. <laughs> it's not like that happened. Right. Um, so I, I, when I read that, I... It's like, my, you were not allowed to travel during the buy rounds to yeah. Bali, Indonesia, yeah. Melbourne. <laughs> see that, yeah, so that would be an example of something that's specific, but probably too restrictive so the AFL Players Association has made a reasonable reasonable point about this as well they came out and said that they're against extra behavioural clauses on players because there's already a set of standards in the AFL already so you know you can't get caught with drugs more than a couple of times anyway like there's already Mm. things in place that can protect clubs from from this happening so placing more on a player like I don't know what, what do you guys think about that yeah it's a tough one to enforce like Guys are going to do what they do in their free time. And, like, as long as they can keep it out of the public eye, they sort of seem with it. I'll give you an example of what, what could be. And I'll, I'll use my own club here, Willy Rioli, right? If Willy Rioli gets caught with marijuana again, Junior Rioli, sorry. If, let's say he gets busted with possession or something like that. He may not actually be liable to be sacked under the AFL rules. Mm. But the Eagles or Paul Adelaide now, in theory, could place a requirement on them to say... Hey, like one more count of possession or whatever, yeah. and you're done. Do you think that would be fair, or do you think know. that's do you think that's an unfair standard you're placing on? A I don't like this view of like, oh, we've got to be good in the public eye, and then you turn on the brown though, and there's just players like <laughs> downing <laughs> drinks, like, oh, Australia has a drinking culture. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I think, um, yeah, it's hard to sort of. It's like borderline coercion to say like sign this contract and here like you can't do this like here here is your livelihood like he wants to play for Collingwood obviously he doesn't want to leave so how are they just gonna like yeah try to dictate all these different parts of his life to make him retain what he's already got I I just think that's like wrong yeah it, it's hard to know without specifics like yeah. placing too many restrictions like you, like the extreme end would be like a curfew or you know don't go out mm. um, like that would be extreme end but without knowing like the little nuanced stuff um, it's hard to really criticise it but I think the AFL PA makes a reasonable argument that there's already these like conditions in place with your contract yeah so adding extra ones on even for a player that has um, messed up in the past it's hard to imagine ones that would be alright that makes sense because isn't there still like the disrepute to the game shit they can can you on anyway mm. like yeah so if he does something extreme again they can probably just get him on disrepute to the game or whatever yeah although that's I mean, pretty vague as it is mm. yeah it's a tough one let us know in the comments yeah. what you think um so yeah just to, to sum up on the Dugowie issue uh as we were saying there was an article that suggested he, he'd re-signed renegotiated those contracts smoothed it all out with Collingwood uh that was 24 hours ago 
And then about five, six hours ago, we saw an article suggesting St Kilda are like really like yeah. hopeful that they're going to sign him. They've so, up their offer to three nights out on the town away. <laughs> <laughs> They've up the three nights away. Yeah, that would be that would be compelling. And one bag every month. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do drugs. No. Yeah, so like we were saying, this shapes as one of the biggest trade periods ever. Um, I don't know about you guys. I don't remember a trade period being this explosive. Do you, do you, remember, do you recall last year's being really underwhelming? Yeah. I don't really. Don't like, remember. I've only been following AFL closely True. for like three, four years. True. So. I suppose it's all relative. I feel like it was 2019. We did the deadline day live stream and it was just, we couldn't even keep up with it. It was like four teams like queuing up in the final minute to get in that um, into that room. Uh, and then it was like five minutes after the deadline day, you hear... Fremantle's got James Aish or, or, or some example of that. Uh, but this year, I feel like... I'll, I'll name the, is the following clubs are like up, in their neck, up to their neck in it, rather. So Collingwood's got about four players they're juggling. Yeah. Brisbane, who've got to get Josh Dunkley and um, you know enough picks for two father-sons this year, one of whom is pick one. Mm-hmm. Um, they've just been... Well, uh, Jack Gunson's just requested a trade. Yeah. Um, Isn't he a free agent? He is Gunson? a free agent. He is a free agent, but we'll touch on that because I, I think that could end up as a trade. Gold Coast, um, obviously losing Rankin and linked to like three other players. Ben Long is one of them. Port Adelaide themselves are still in the Dunkley race, getting Junior Rioli. Fremantle, Luke Jackson, and then all the players that might uh, request a trade. The Western Bulldogs with Lockie Hunter, Josh Dunkley, Rory Lobb, and then St Kilda. Lockie Hunter? Lockie Hunter, yeah. I hadn't heard that one. Where's yeah, he going? That emerged a couple of days ago that he is uh, looking for a fresh start somewhere else. Oh, shit. So, enough. yeah, so sort of. Bleeding a bit of midfield talent now, but potentially getting in a few tolls in the yeah. lob. Uh, um, Liam Jones and one other defender that I have forgotten who. Oh, Tomlinson. It was actually Tomlinson. He's actually, oh, yeah. he's actually done a medical there. So, oh. um, And then St Kilda, who have you know potentially losing Brad Hill, Hunter Clark, although they've come out and said they're probably going to keep Clark. That probably depends on Dugowie. And then Jordan Dugowie. Yeah. So that's, that's six clubs, seven clubs there. That was just brushing over him as well. Yeah, that was yeah. seven clubs there who are like... Got a lot of shit going on. And then I reckon you could point to almost every club in the league who are looking at at least one to two players. Yeah, GWS are going to be busy. Like yeah. GWS. yeah, they're doing their <laughs> annual fire sale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't even mention Richmond who are going to get Taranto and Hopper. Yeah. Potentially going to win the trade period. So, uh, yeah, this is unprecedented, I think. And it, is, it seems to be increasing each year. Last year was the exception. Um, but gee, it's good for content, Drew. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're going to be the content man this next month for trades, mate. Yeah, it's contentment. <laughs> but yeah, there's plenty going on. Plenty going on. Brisbane seems to be everyone's like go-to right now. Mm, yeah. Like, what what is it with Brisbane? Like, do do the players just know that that's going to be like the next dynasty or uh, premiership spot? Like. Jack Gunson requesting a trade, Dunkley, like, mm. it's Brisbane. It's well, not like a destination place. Dunkley it's probably a lovely place. Specifically, I think his missus or something is from there and he's bought a house in Queensland, so okay. he sort of has a bit of. I can't answer that, although background. I do think. I thought his, his missus played uh, netball for an Adelaide team. Yeah, that I think she's just Adelaide moved to league. Queensland or something. Yeah, okay. I, or she plays in Adelaide and lives in Queensland the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. She's playing in Adelaide at the moment, but lives in Queensland yeah, right. oh, really? most of the year. Okay, there you go then. Yeah. But Gunson's a weird one. I that, suppose that's been talked about. That's a lot years, of ex Hawks, old guys mm. go to Brisbane. That's a bit of a recurring theme. Fagan. Hodge, virtual, Fagans. The yeah, Fagan yeah. was at Hawthorne, so um, yeah, that that's that link. Uh, well, he might not be there for the first bit of yeah. next year as well. Yeah, yeah. I, if I didn't all, actually. Depending how old yeah, it I didn't. We, we could probably talk about it a little bit. I don't really know too much about the situation, but um, yeah, that's so why I didn't put it in this podcast. But obviously, there's that racism allegation at Hawthorne yeah. um, so for anyone who didn't know <laughs> uh, so Clarkson and Fags uh, have s- both stepped down or Fagan stepped down and Clarkson's They've suspended def- his Clarkson's start. deferred his start mm. start at North yeah. yeah I'm pretty sure I, saw, I just saw some random thing the other day but they said like they're probably not going to be available for round one like the investigation's going to be that wow. long ongoing sure. could be wrong could be talking wow. shite and just saw some random post on mm. Facebook but yeah. yeah, I mean, I suppose there's no good time for a racism allegation, although it, it just seems like awkward timing in particular for trade period because there's a number of players who are, I reckon are going to North for the mm. first time ever. North's going to get a whole heap of recruits. Yeah. Um, and it's undoubtedly because Clarkson's there. Yeah. So if there's now doubt on, on his future there, it makes it a bit awkward for someone like a Griffin Logie yeah. or a Brad oh, Hill. Please, please stay, stay Logie Bear, please stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Logie's the only one I want to keep. That That's heartbreaking, that one. Yeah. Like... Yeah drafted from Perth like top pick 
heart and soul of the club, yeah, like yeah. loved by all of the boys, and he's just like, no, nah, I'm just going to go play for North Melbourne. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, we're on the cusp of a premiership window. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. No, like, and he leaves. I didn't like, know you were going to say Probably for window. an extra few, <laughs> probably an extra million or so, I'd guess. On the, you reckon? Yeah, it sounds like he's getting a couple hundred thousand a year from North and longer term. Okay. Yeah, so that and the, probably the preferred position of yeah, like he's going to yeah, play job security and yeah. then Clarkson as well. Yeah. Like so Josh Gibson sense. was the role that he was spruiked. Yeah, right. A former yeah. North player as well before yeah. Hawthorne. Yeah. There's no one remembers. <laughs> <laughs> back in my day. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, Shut up. I think Collingwood are pretty brave going back in like for all these players after like the salary cap issues that they've just had. They must yeah. have it under control, obviously. Well, yeah. I think Grundy's going to be key to that. Yeah. So Grundy potentially getting offloaded to Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Uh, that seems, as the way it's reported, the, the relationship with Grundy is so strained that he's definitely not at Collingwood next year. Yeah, week, so. okay. Uh, but it, uh, the way it was reported as well is that he feels a bit pushed out, a bit like Shaw. Yeah. So they're aggressively kind of, oh shit, let's just offload all these, these are they gonna, players off our list. Yeah. Are they going to pay a portion of his contract? Yeah. yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, That's no. crazy. <laughs> to join a like fellow contender yeah in melbourne who just literally down the road yeah yeah exactly crazy um who are obviously probably going to save some money with jackson and then need a ruckman as well um gold coast another weird one just like offloading that top round one draft pick for a bag of chips who are you referring oh, to the bows where they're attached oh to yeah sorry the yes yeah yeah like, what is going on wait so that, do, do you get bows and the pick yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like the Will Brody deal, but on steroids. That well, is silly. even though Bose probably isn't quite as good as Brody, and he's on more money. It sounds like he's probably he's better than Brody was at the time. Well, now Brody's a better player, yeah. but uh, but Bose I think presents more uh, as a, in terms of value than Brody did at the time. But we have to be cognizant of the fact here that we don't know what they are asking for. Mm. So we, we kind of assumed, oh, yes, we'll give you pick seven and bows for pick 50. Yeah. Because that's a Gold Coast thing to do. But <laughs> I'd imagine they're looking to trade into next year's draft. Mm. So they have way too many picks this year. Uh, they have like three or four second rounders. Um, they're going to get their own pick and the pick for Isaac Rankin. So they're looking for pick five plus. They mm-hmm. came out and said the pick five is not going to be enough. And then, um, and they've also got salary cap issues. So what I think they're doing is offloading players. They, um, they're contracted and they can't afford anymore. So your Fiorini, Sharp, and Bows, and, and then I think they're going to try and push their assets into next year's draft because they don't have enough spots on the list to draft these players. Yeah, okay. So that's why they're going to cop a little bit of a loss on everything. So Sharp will go cheap, Fiorini will go cheap, and then they're going to put pick seven hopefully into next year, um, and then yeah, probably fire off a few second rounders for. You just we, apparently they, were, they said they were going to attach second rounders to players, so like Fiorini in twenty six for a future pick. Yeah. Okay. So again, yeah, just no value in that at all. Literally fire sale yeah. stuff like two for the price of one. Yeah. So it's kind of a reflection of the um, the disadvantages of the situation they were in. They couldn't retain players, so they they gave these big contracts to players that they didn't really like, didn't warrant that price. Yeah. Uh, and now are offloading them. It's weird how an expansion club like wouldn't have had that helping hand from the AFL to make sure that this didn't happen. Mm. You were talking about it on the last podcast how like you're sort of worried about GWS at this point. Like, mm. where do they go to from here? Like, they've had like all of this talent come through and developed, and now like Taranto, Hopper, mm. Bobby Hill, they're just like, no, nah, we're gonna dip. I don't think players like playing for GWS because there's just no. Well, there's no history. culture. Yeah, there's no there's no retention culture. So. Yeah. You know, like nobody really leaves Geelong. They'll they'll come and play for him. Mm. Even um, Brizzy, at least most of us probably grew up seeing him get that free paint in the early two thousands. That sort of somewhat in people's. Well, they did have that horror run of retention, and yeah. now they're good again. Yeah. Um, yeah. W- w- thankfully, my club as well has really been really good with retention as well. Um, but yeah, w- I guess like it's just there's no real stigma about. Doing your four years at GWS and requesting a trade because you're like, okay, just join the rest of them in the line. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll process your deals shortly. And the funny thing is, the one year they tried to make a stand was Cam McCarthy, where Freo, <laughs> were, and where Freo were offering two first round picks for Cam McCarthy. That is ridiculous. Refused out of principle because they were sick of bleeding players. So he came home sick for you, and we ended up getting him for a couple of seconds or one second or some shit like As that. As if we almost traded two first round picks for Cam McCarthy. Yeah. That would have Jeez. been the most Freo thing ever. You yeah. did swap seven for three, though, and then they yeah. swapped three for two, so they got Taranto out of it. Yeah. And now That's, he's gone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. circle of GWS. <laughs> yeah. But, like, what does it say about the longevity of this club? Yeah. It's tough. I'm just, like, their results have been satisfactory, definitely, but I'm worried about do, how do they recover from this 
losing Toronto and Hopper in one hit now. Do they just keep drafting and reselling them back to yeah. the Victorian clubs? Well, you're going to have to draft players that actually want to play. Like, when was it Tanner Bruin got drafted? He was just like, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's one leaving too. He's one leaving. Yeah. yeah. Straight yeah, back to Tanner Geelong Bruin. to play his entire career, most likely. Yeah. There's a few players linked to Geelong as well. Like Jack Bowes is also... Uh, I read on... I think it was... Um, Instagram, whether it be Trade Radio or 7 AFL, I figure I'm always really bad at the source. Yeah. But uh, Ge- Geelong are the favourite for Jack Bowes. Yeah. So I don't know how that I happens. saw Dangerfield's very excited for that for whatever reason. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. I suppose they got a little bit of money now with um, Selwood retiring, Dowhouse retired today as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's pretty pretty bizarre. Frio are in a weird position with, mm. yeah, as I said, Premiership window cusp, mm. um, like Blake Akers, we traded him in that that Brad Hill trade, wasn't it? And like he sort of didn't seem keen to come back, and then as soon as his contract's done, just dip straight back to Melbourne. Mm. I think people just want to live in Melbourne; it's a cooler city. I believe he was um, lowballed. Is that yeah? He got lowballed contract. Yeah, yeah well. okay. Like yeah. Carlton offered an extra year and an extra hundred ish a year. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But yeah, great, great player for us this year. And then, like, Rory Lobb, I don't really care for with Jackson coming in, yeah. potentially. Yeah, that, that's happening, by the way. What, Luke Jackson coming yeah. in? Yeah. I, um, I, from a friend of a friend, it came from the horse's mouth. So. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, West Coast, <laughs> yeah! West Coast pretty much pulled out publicly as well. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you back. Um, <laughs> no, but um, I think I think it was like the worst kept secret. But yeah, yeah, so lined up with um, him and Sean Darcy at Metro's. Aware for that picture. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've babe. seen Metro's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we such st- a Metro's picture. We strongly <laughs> suspect Joycey took that picture. He was in Fremantle that night. <laughs> um, People that say that, like, oh, I don't rate Luke Jackson are imbeciles. Like he's the like the next nit that sort of thing. Yeah, like generational. It's just that raw. Like potential wise, like he's only been yeah. playing football as he's chosen strong. sport. <laughs> really, pretty much, he's like Anakin, mate. He came in late, bro. He came stra- into the Jedi Order late. True. Straight up, Anakin, yeah. about to Jack- fuck Anakin, shit up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mate. <laughs> but like his ability to, um, like his second and third and fourth effort for a ruckman is second to none in the competition already. Um, can play, yeah. Well, we haven't seen him play forward much, but apparently can play that key forward role as well. Sounds like Freya have been spoken him like a Mark Blitzarps type of role, though. I'd love that. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Because he literally plays like a midfielder, like after the, the yeah. right contest, he's at ground level. And yeah. we've seen how beneficial it's been to have uh, Blixarves and Reece Stanley in the centre bounce. So yeah. I'd, I'd love to see that. Especially with a couple of smaller guys like a Sarong Brayshaw, Jackson, yeah. and three guys in the circle with Fridge tapping it down. That'd be nice. Big swag. My concern with Jackson would be like, you paid a lot of money for a guy you don't know his best position yet. Mm. He is still young enough to turn it around. It's not like he's 27 and doesn't ever know yeah. about a, a, a best position. Um, he's no Brent Staker, but um, <laughs> yeah, so that, that's my issue. I'm, I'm quite yeah. glad we, we're not in the running, not because he's not good, uh, but because it would have been too risky for us. Are you scared by the fact that like we've seen how a trade, like different scale, but like the Tim Kelly situation, um, how that sort of has transpired in hindsight considering yeah what we're gonna to have to give up for luke jackson does that like concern you as a freeo fan that a few years a little like especially with the fact we've bled guys like Logue as a result of it yeah like, it's a direct result of us going for jackson we've had to sort of lowball Logue and stuff to the point where he's considered these other offers yeah the other guys you can sort of live with they're replaceable like acres jackson i oh, sorry not acres you can replace them with like johnson or yeah mm. one of those sort of dudes mm-hmm yeah. Lob, eh, he doesn't want to be about. here. Tim Kelly deal went fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I yeah. just don't want like the cracks to start appearing in <laughs> the uh, team camaraderie. Like once, like a how old was Luke Jackson? Like 21, 22? 20, I think. Twenty. Yeah. Stupid. He would have been two thousand and one born, so twenty one, I reckon. Yeah, my age, nuts. Yeah, yeah crazy, true. crazy. Yeah. But like, you see, like a young Druzy come through the door, and he's already on like eight hundred k a year. They're yeah. just gonna be like, oh, the fuck is that guy? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like when like Brayshaw's are on, they've been there grafting, laying the groundwork. Like, I suppose they're all gonna like welcome him with open arms. Yeah. But like, he comes with a big price tag and um yeah i suppose a fair amount of external pressure but as jl always says we don't focus on the external so 
It's funny that you're the same age as Luke Jackson and I'm older than Tim Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> the similarities. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of overlap here. Yeah, me and Luke Jackson both love metros. Yeah, you're about to take over. I'm about to be pushed into retirement. I'm <laughs> not about to take over. I have doubts. <laughs> Three <laughs> days doubt. into Silver October. <laughs> say, yeah, yeah. The clarity. All right, enough, <laughs> enough talk about this, um, this boring trade stuff. Let's get to the real stories, guys. Jaden Hunt to West Coast. <laughs> Have you seen this? I saw this, yes. I think this is actually a little bit more interesting th- than the surface would suggest. Uh, does that make sense? 27 years old. Yeah. Do you think it's a bit weird for West Coast to be going for a 27-year-old running defender? When I saw it, it just like screamed Nathan Wilson to me. Yeah. <laughs> like he's... I don't want to say it because it'll probably... It could happen, but like you don't see Jaden Hunt really winning a flag in the next... Five six years. Mm. Well, he won a premiership. No, I mean yeah. with with West Coast. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like yeah. in terms of where West Coast are at, and that's just like Nathan Wilson. Will he be in our best twenty two in the next few years? Probably not. Mm. So, mm. like, great great player. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Great runner. Has a big big leg on him. It's a good pickup. Mm. Disposal's a bit iffy with Hunt. It's a, he's a yeah. bit like I think he's kind of been pushed out by Ed Langdon going there as well. Like, yeah. Both of those sort of run all day. Slightly butcher it, but good runner <laughs> types. Yeah. Slightly butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just thought, I think it's a weird target. So for us, we clearly identified um, leg speed in the back half. So Yo played a bit in there when he wasn't injured. Jones played there to some ex- success. And we're looking at a 27 year old running defender to just completely like improve in the short mm. term. And I just think that's a curious move. And then I saw Stuart, Stephen Silvani made the point. He's like, well, the Eagles play, play like re-signing their veterans other than um, Kennedy, going for a 27-year-old Jaden Hunt. They're loading up for one more, and I'm into it, baby. <laughs> Premiership 2023. It's no, just not gonna happen. I'm being facetious a little bit, but it does. He s- thinks it, they're Collingwood. It seems at odds with way, where we need to head, and the so the opportunity cost here for the Eagles is like. So he's going to be unrestricted free agent. It's only a list spot. We can uh, presumably afford it. Uh, we're not giving up a draft pick. We're still going to take all the draft picks we need to. But I'm obviously, they see him as a 27 turning 28 year old best 22 player. I'm yeah. a little bit surprised that we're trying to improve the side as it is right now with the 27 year old. I just think it's so depressing losing games. Like just to get <laughs> someone in, it's just like yeah, just give us some runoff halfback because yeah, that's been your big issue, hasn't it? Like moving the ball from yeah. defense to attack. And yeah. yeah, I think he just sort of puts a bit of duct tape over that. Yeah, bang. So it's a weird move, but I rate it. I think it's I think it's a good move. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not against it in isolation, but uh, I'm just interested in where uh, where we see the list this year because we are do- we're not doing anything really other than taking our draft picks to suggest that we're going to play the kids next year. Mm. So yeah, that's if, an interesting one. If you think Jaden Hunt's going to add to like a <laughs> an effort of a premiership you're delusional mm. I think yeah like it, it's it, gonna happen in the next three years which obviously unless your name's Stephen yeah. Silvani yeah, 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 yeah well he is a smart bloke he knows what he's talking about yeah, like, like what he, well, he wasn't saying he thinks the Eagles will win one he thinks the Eagles are gearing up for one that's two different things yeah okay so. true he thinks the Eagles think they can win yeah yeah exactly I guess yeah, that so. makes sense with Trevor Nisbet at the helm <laughs> 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 that's just pure delusion though like Oh, maybe I could be wrong. And he, I don't know. The, the forward line in midfield is just, like, not top 10 in the AFL right now. No, no. The midfield sucks. But, are we, yeah, I mean, not to get into an excuse of the West Coast, but we haven't really seen the team, like, fully fit in, like, yeah. years. So, uh, I think we'll be better than people expect, but that doesn't mean much. How many of your current, like, forward line players would you expect to be there in six, seven years? So, obviously, Oscar Allen... Six or seven years is a long time. Oscar Allen, maybe yeah, Liam Oscar Ryan. Uh, Liam Ryan would be like thirty-three in six or seven years. I think. Yeah, I think okay. he's twenty-six. Yeah, yeah, I think so, he's like my age. Yeah, uh, not that's a good many point, though. No, um, Jack Williams. Yeah, maybe. And he obviously, oh, he's he's played one game, so no, no. He only played one game. Yeah. Was it against North? Yes. <laughs> that's because we literally had no one else. Yeah. To like, Come on. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Well. Enough of the trade talk, as riveting <laughs> as that was. New AFL game, have you heard of this? <laughs> I want to talk about it. Go on. I love AFL games. Well, I, I hate all of them except for one. <laughs> Live but I six. love the idea of, a, of an AFL game. Have you mm. seen the trailer for it? I haven't. Has it come out? Yeah. No. Nah. Or actually, is it... A, it I've yeah. just seen photos. I think it's a teaser trailer. Um, so it was like Geelong and Sydney in the grand final, and it had like set shots and, and stuff like that. So you knew it was mm. coming though. I saw like, fo- like leaked photos or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
What is your experience with AFL games, Ruiz? Uh The 2011 game, when it was like the Collingwood and St Kilda mm. cover, that was mm. a fun fun game. I think that was like the first... Oh, not the first game I played. It wasn't the first, but it was the first one in a while. I think four years. Yeah, so it was like maybe the first one on like 360 and yep. PS3. You are right. Um, That was good fun. And then AFL Evolution, the one that came... Was it AFL Evolution 1 that came out on Xbox One and AFL PS4? Live 2 in between that. Yeah. And then the same people did AFL Evolution 1 and 2. Yeah, so I didn't get AFL Evolution 2. AFL Evolution 1, I did a career mode with Tip Rat and then mm. never played it again. Yeah, it was <laughs> shit. It's just like when you go, go and play FIFA, it's like when you go back to playing <laughs> AFL Evolution, it's like playing Minecraft. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I got some good news for you. you yeah. like this, okay? Big Ant Studios made AFL Live uh, 11. Mm. No, 2011, it wasn't called 11. Yeah. Good game, good mechanics. Like, it actually felt fun to play. You, yeah. You could only play a uh, single season. There was no career mode, so that sucked. Mm. Um, then uh, Wicked Witch took over. They did the Wii game, and then they made AFL Live 2. Worst <laughs> abomination I've ever <laughs> played in my life. AFL Evolution 1 and 2, very flawed. Yeah. But... Big Ant Studios has taken back over the license. We're back, baby. Yeah, that this, I think this is a huge win. and We're back for the Wii games. Yeah, there's, um, <laughs> there's career mode. Uh, I don't think there's a be a pro, but there's manager mode or coach mode, whatever it's called. Ma- yeah, I think it's called management mode, actually. And the, these guys, uh, not that you would have played this, but they made cricket 19 and 22, and it's actually a genuinely good game. Yeah. The best cricket game on the market, and that's a global market. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also did some rugby games and stuff like that. And they were genuinely good. Yeah, okay. So I think this has a lot of potential to be a genuinely good We AFL need game. a good AFL game. <sighs> Big Ant taking over is the biggest win in this space for 11 years. <laughs> since I last took over the license. I've done my waiting. Yeah. 12 years of it. <laughs> yes, <man. laughs> cool. All right. I just wanted to touch base on that because that is very exciting. So that's going to launch early next year. There needs um, to be like an ultimate team type game. Like they need yeah. to make the online experience. Like no one plays single player these days. It's all online with your mates. Yeah. Um, I'm in the minority who loves like FIFA manager mode. But for the most part. Yeah. You like are, you are yeah. the mo- minority, but um, like <laughs> FIFA ultimate. Asian. <laughs> <laughs> make more money to develop the game too. If you do like the player packs and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. Shit. Like more money back into the game. Not exactly play to win, but yeah, the packs yeah. and um, yeah, but being able to buy coins and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, didn't Evo Evo had like online like what what was it? It was just was? like you'd play as whatever team. Like you yeah. couldn't. Oh, maybe you could create a team and play against your mates, but like there was no like divisions or like ranked. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. there was, and I didn't do it, but yeah. so, well, it was a I, shit I game think, anyway. I think you're right, yeah, the game sucked. The, the key to, um, to AFL games progressing is to get a, um, one title out there and then just keep, keep yeah. it going with the same the same uh, game engine and developing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, AFL Evolution, they only did like three games, but it, it still kind of sucked, whereas Big Ant in one game did an amazing job. Yeah. And then if you look at like their Cricket 22 career mode, there's like... Not that everyone loves this stuff, but there's like press conferences, you actually yeah. have conversations and stuff like that. Like that is so far ahead of what we've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. So I reckon give this big ant this game and then one more and I reckon like we'll actually have a very playable game. Yeah, a proper like my player like two K experience would yeah, be sick. Uh, yeah. Two K starting to get a bit ridiculous though. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, with all that sort of stuff. It's gone too far that way. Really? Like you literally have to walk around this village and shit for ages. Oh. And <laughs> shit. Yeah, like when you go on and uh when uh, more so when I was a nerdy kid, not like now as a nerdy adult, but uh you, you go on the forums and that like people have like their FIFA wish lists or AFL, even AFL wish lists. And there's dumb shit like be a referee mode <laughs> and it's like mate you don't even realise how boring that would be like you're just requesting it because you just thought of it yeah. like, can you imagine doing a career mode as a referee that, that would red card yeah. holding the ball after a certain while those press conferences and stuff they get boring yeah like, and, and all that so yeah it's a fine art when People, it first came into 2k it was so much fun yeah. though like yeah, being able yeah. to answer in press conferences and it was but like once you play the game a few times it's very repetitive yeah the same thing with FIFA manager mode like there was a press conference element you would just skip it after a while. Yeah. It's just the same questions. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. In the early of the latest 2K, actually, I'll give it a bit of credit. It was like, depending what you say, depends what happens in the story. Like, so if you're like yeah, a cocky okay. asshole in the story yeah, mode. Yeah, that's cool. Like, well, yeah. That, yeah, that, like, I fuck Like, with I that, came out and that saying, yeah, fuck my coach, he should start me pretty much. Yeah. yeah right, right. Yeah. Well, so that's cool. But like, yeah. yeah, the generic stuff's boring. Well, there's only so many ways you can make the NBA. It's like, go through yeah. college and then you go undrafted yeah. and then you go play overseas and then you start at yeah. high school and then it's like, and now you're twerking on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like the usual cliche 
cliche of the press conference thing usually just turns into like the usual yeah full credit to the boys it was a good four quarter effort mm. everyone oh. played their role to perfection yeah all those cliches Th- those cliches give me AIDS I was, I was watching <laughs> I don't um, think that's what it was <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a waffle game earlier in the season of a player that I've like known in the past um, and he got interviewed after the game he's a really good player um, I'll tell you who is after the game but it was the most like stock standard interview you could ever get I'm like this dude doesn't have a soul bro mm. but full credit to the boys are yeah, yeah. we knew oh. they were side they were going to come out hard yeah. that every time we knew yeah. we need a four quarter effort yeah, yeah. yeah he's boring like, as bro if, if you went and spoke to like your mum or your best mate after a game you wouldn't be like oh yeah full credit to the boys uh, yeah good four, to, four quarter effort like just speak about what actually happened yeah did you see me bloody tackle that bloke yeah. <laughs> see wrecked him I wasn't like even pace. playing <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh, we'll probably wrap it up there soon because we've got about five minutes on that camera so okay. um, thank you for coming on to the show Druzy no worries um, what can you tell us about what to expect from your channel I know you're going to go into a busy period with uni mm. uh, are you going to be uploading and uh, what's what's coming in the future for you I don't know what the next month or two is going to look like I yeah. just need to get out Manscaped ads <laughs> 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 so maybe like just tutorials yeah <laughs> 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 Yeah, platinum package uh, DIY or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> four point baby. Um, yeah, I don't. I actually don't know. Um, I was writing in my diary last night about like the the next year is going to be no idea. Mm. So I can't even provide an answer at all. Analysis. Um, True Footy Enterprises, Friday Limited, coming yeah. soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank um, you, Mike. This maybe maybe the last time for a while. Maybe we'll do a pod uh, before December. Uh, but we can do that on your channel. Yeah, Druzy, if, um, if you want. You were the last I mean, guest. Oh, well. oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you've been on like four of the 12 episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Baby. Joe Rogan has his friends on all the time. Yeah, that's hey, fine. Yeah, that's cool. I'll be your Joey Diaz, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's his name? Who's that real controversial dude? Um, Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones. Yeah, I, could, I can do an Alex Jones. Yeah, <laughs> you probably are the Alex Jones of the AFL world. Oh, baby, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, Sam Mitchell did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's got to do it. <laughs> Thank you for listening, guys. Um, you can watch this on YouTube and listen on Spotify. But can you listen to it? At this point, it's too late. You've already listened to or watched the whole thing, so there's no point to go on the other platform. Save your jokes. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> nice.